Hi, I'm Mark for ACLS Certification Institute, and welcome back to another Rapid Algorithm Review. Today we're going to cover ACS, Acute Coronary Syndrome. Now it all starts with the patient, the patient's presentation. And when we think about heart attacks and acute coronary syndrome, we tend to think of the typical symptoms. The chest pain, uh, shortness of breath, pain radiating up into the shoulder, maybe up into the jaw. Remember that in women, an unusual fatigue by itself can be a symptom of a heart attack and should be suspect for acute coronary syndrome. So in women, an, an unusual fatigue. Now in men, remember that if a patient wanted to, they could fake any symptom. They can fake the chest pain. They go, oh, my chest hurts, I'm having trouble breathing, my butt itches. They can fake every symptom they want, except sweating. A patient cannot fake diaphoresis. So you show up at the scene or you have a patient come into your emergency room, they have shortness of breath, complaining of chest tightness, and they're sweaty, they're in trouble. Everybody's in trouble, and it's time to go to work. So remember, it starts with the patient presentation. So you've determined your patient is having an acute coronary event, time to go to work. Now looking at the algorithm, there's all these different things we need to do. And in reality, these are gonna happen in concert. Somebody's calling the shots, we tend to do all these at the same time. Support the ABCs if needed, and be prepared for things to go south. We have an ischemic cart that can become irritated very easily. So have your defibrillator and resuscitative gear ready. We're gonna oxygenate to achieve an SpO2 of 94 to 95%. You need to get this patient on a monitor, get an IV in them, get a 12 lead EKG, start administering our medications. If there's no contraindications, aspirin administration. And nitroglycerin, again, if there's no contraindications. And you can ask the guy, sir, have you taken um, Viagra or Cialis within the last 24, 48 hours? And he may look at you and go, no. <laughs> okay. I'm like a Turkish soldier, once served in a circus freak show. And then you say, okay, sir, that's fine. But if I give you, if you're taking that drug and I give you this drug, it may potentiate it, cause a precipitous fatal drop in your blood pressure. We may not even make it to the parking lot. And then he goes, oh, Viagra. I thought you asked if I had a Snickers bar. Yes, I have had Viagra in the last 24 hours. Do not administer the nitro. Again, it can cause a precipitous fatal drop in their blood pressure. Get that 12 lead EKG. Remember, we're looking for ST segment elevation. If your patient's having ST segment elevation, notify the receiving facility immediately so that they can prepare to receive this patient and get things moving so we can open up that coronary vessel when they hit the door. Now, if you're in the emergency department and you're receiving a patient from the field, a code STEMI, within the first 10 minutes of their arrival, we wanna do a few things. First, reassess the patient. Get an updated set of vital signs. Review their history. Assure adequate oxygenation. Assure adequate vascular access. We wanna to try to get a chest X-ray within the first 30 minutes, but if that's part of your code STEMI response, X-ray should already be at the door when they hit the door. Administer your medications if they haven't already been administered, your aspirin, your nitro if there's no contraindications. Retake a 12 lead EKG. Again, we're looking for ST segment elevation. Now, if that 12 lead is showing ST segment elevation or a new or presumed left bundle branch block, game's on. Time to open up that coronary vessel. Patient's either going right to the cath lab or because we've already started our fibrinolytic checklist, they may receive TPA right there in the ER. Now, looking at the algorithm, there's a couple of suggested time frames for opening up this vessel. If we're using fibrinolytic therapy, it should be within 30 minutes. That's our goal. And we should have done our exclusion checklist within the first 10 minutes of the patient hitting the ER. Or, if they're going to the cath lab, door to balloon up time within 90 minutes. That's our goal. That's why it's so important in the field to call early. Give the hospital time to prepare to receive this patient, get everything in line so we can reduce the time it takes us to open up that vessel and reperfuse the heart. Now, if your 12 lead doesn't show ST segment elevation, but instead some depression or T wave inversion, which could mean ischemia, and your patient is still having complaints consistent with an AMI, you still may want to follow your protocol. Still consider your nitro, your aspirin therapy, and get an expert involved in this patient right away. Other medications to consider. Heparin. 
uh, 2B3A inhibitors and beta blockers. And remember, beta blockers are going to help slow the heart rate down and reduce the force of contractility, thus reducing the heart's oxygen requirements. It's kind of like an engine with a gumped up fuel line. The beta blockers are taking your foot off the gas. So your 12 lead shows no ST segment elevation, no T wave inversion. You have a normal 12 lead, but your patient still has complaints. Well, we're not going to let them just walk out of the ER just yet. Maybe run some labs, look at your cardiac markers, and then watch for changes in that patient's condition. So, 12 lead was normal, labs came back normal, we're getting ready to discharge this patient, but discharge them with the instructions that should any of these symptoms reoccur, immediately call 911. I'm Mark for ACLS Certification Institute. This has been Rapid Algorithm Review for Acute Coronary Syndrome. Remember, like us on Facebook, and please become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. Thanks, see you in the next video.